Hey folks, this is um, just sort of a prologue on the uh, root vegetable and tuber mash that was so fabulously loved uh, on Thanksgiving. I wanted to show you then uh, the ratio. So r rarely do you get parsnips this large, and what I kind and and actually in my uh, store we don't really get. Um, celery root, celeriac, this large either. So at uh, Thanksgiving, I had two pounds of potatoes and two small of these and one small of this. So two small parsnips, one small um, celeriac. So what I've done here, I was trying to preserve a kind of two to one to one ratio. And right now it looks more like it. So I added two more potatoes. So we're over the two pound mark. And I think that these are probably more than uh, the one pound mark. This is probably one pound. So I'm just saying it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to show you the original ratio was two to one to one. And I think I've upped on the parsnips. They're very mild. And I just balanced it out with another potato. But the, the, the point of the of this preamble is it doesn't really matter you can make any ratio you want so now i'm going to chop everything i have a pot here that has a spout and we're going to chop these into two inch pieces possibly smaller everything will be chopped the same but we're going to cook uh the potatoes first in chicken stock and it will be just enough to cover and uh, probably four cups, possibly four and a half cups, or five. And then after there's a certain amount of cooking there, we're going to add the uh, chopped rest of the chopped vegetables uh, to get it going. Okay, hi, my lovelies. This uh, half here is the parsnips chopped, and this side here is the celeriac chopped. That might be a little bit big, but they're roughly in the same dimension. I want to show you, here's some garlic, and I want to show you, oops, the potatoes are all chopped in a similar um, chunk, similar dimension. I want to turn the oven on, and I want to bring four cups of stock to a boil but because i have more um i have more veg than i did before and this is not a small pot i and i don't know like one could use this pot right but i'm worried that it will overflow so basically you want to cover enough you want enough stock to cover so I'm going to um, put two of these boxes in and um, you can ask me what you think uh, how many cups you think that is but right now it doesn't matter we can always add water with a little bit of bouillon which is um, totally convenient you see so I'm going to put uh, this is coming up. I'm putting it to high. I'm going to cut these three large garlic cloves into pieces. And we're going to season that before we add the potatoes. So we need this to come to a boil. And then we're going to um, cover it. Uh, simmering for four, uh, four or five minutes. So obviously that's going to take a little time, and I'll be right back. Okay, my lovelies, let's see if the voice is on. Okay, so this has been simmering, covered. Oh, it smells good. Uh, stock and garlic. We just wanted to infuse our stock with uh, flavorful garlic. And it's just had a nice simmer. And so we're going to use my spider and we're going to put the potatoes in 
and I'm going to turn the heat back up because these are cold. You don't add the water. This is not the good water. The good water is the stock. And you can see there's still enough room. There's enough stock there to cover this when it cooks. So we're going to turn this back up to, we want to get it to a simmer. And we're going to cook that for five minutes before we add the rest of the root vegetables. Potatoes are hard, are, are, um, take longer. That's the only reason. So that's it for now. Uh, unless you want to wait for me, watch the pot boil. Okay, love. So we have our cooking potatoes that's been simmering for uh with the lid on for five minutes or so and we're going to put everything else in the parsnips and the celery root and we're going to cook this for an additional hold on hold on don't hurt yourself i'm going to give it a stir a stir and try and see whether or not the liquid is covering it i just i just lost a piece but uh i want to give it a shakedown yeah shakedown the way you do that the way zelensky was sucked down by trump and he got away with it so we're shaking down we just want this uh additional badge that i'm going to turn the heat up because we need this now cold veg to come yes and so can you see yeah you can see it's still covered we have enough liquid if we didn't have enough liquid i could add some water and then like a little smidgen of uh bouillon Star uh, i use i like to use the um hold on let me show you i like to use like a drizzle of concentrated bouillon but i haven't used that because normally i don't need it but it's just if your if your store is closed and you can't get more stock that's a way to do it so i'm just going to turn up this heat when it comes to a uh, gets to a simmer again or a boil turn it down and then we're going to simmer for 15 minutes we're going to get our fork out because we need to test it for doneness before we um, before we uh, move on to the next stage. So that's I, th I think this will boil down. So I'm not worried about the water level. All right then. Okay, peeps. So this took a little longer. I everything was really good. I tested everything, but some of my uh, celery yak did not, was not done here. It's totally done now. It was not done because some of my chunks were too big and it was not done at 15. So I left it in for, let's see. Well, the fork goes through nicely. Okay, turn that off now. Now we're going to, I'm not... I'm not fooling around. I'm just going to use this strainer and I'm going to strain it into a bowl because we need to save some of the juice. And this, the pot handles are great. This is a new thing I bought uh, from the Netherlands. Stainless steel, really good price. And I'm happy with it. I have some... Uh, Okay, first things first, we need to strain this. And we need to get that stove top turned off. Okay, the stove top's turned off, and now my glasses are fogged. But that's still hot. So we're going to have to make space here before we do a blend. And I might need more mint. This is mint. This is parsley. I don't want 
all that parsley. I just, I, I think there should be equal amounts. So when you have your pot, I'll just move this out of the way and everything will be fine. Okay, so what we're going to do now is put the root vegetables and the tubers, which is the potatoes, back in here. And we're going to add a quarter cup of olive oil. You see how much is in here. This amount of oil is not too much. But we're basically finishing it. Okay, so there's the oil. I'm going to do uh, whipping cream, ha uh, heavy cream, quarter. But obviously, you could leave that out and just add uh, more stock. I have a lot of it. I'm not going to bring it out because it will melt in that boil on that bottle on that surface. Sorry. Uh, where am I going now? Yeah, and so if you uh, don't have an immersion blender, you could use a mashing potato masher or a blender or a food processor. I'm using this because I, I have it. So why not? And I want to do high. And we're just going to, we want this to be made smooth and I'm, my goal is to make it beautiful and after it's um, after we've been mashing it oh look you can tell how thick it is already so now we have the ability to pour in some of the cooking liquid just a little bit and we're going to keep going, if I can. And it's, it actually works really well. And I'm, I'm going to do the put, place the herbs in here once I get a good mash. There's water, I mean, there's chicken stock, the uh, cooking liquid on the exterior. So I'm just going to move it into the center. You know what? I need a dash of liquid before I add the, uh, let's do a quarter cup. I like some of this, what's underneath. There we go. And then we're going to keep going. I don't like it too thick. I like it just right. And that's to your own taste. Looking beautiful. So now we're going to add the, uh, where did I put it? Oh, I, I hid it from myself. We're going to add the mint. And trust me, you could use any herbs, but if you don't add the mint, you're missing out. And I'm going to do half the parsley. And we're going to blend that up too so that you don't have little green things in your teeth, you're just going to get the flavor. And I feel like we really pretty much got there. There's a piece of... I, I really I, I really urge you to bo bother with getting the mint. It really makes it special. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm on the slow side. Hold on, faster. Okay, so this is the puree, and it's going to go into a big bowl. And I'm going to start with the uh, doing the decoration, which is essential. And I just wanted to mention that do not forget to season this with salt and pepper. It needed, I think, about three pinches of salt and two of pepper. Anyway, so here we are. That's the mash in all its glory. It's freaking delicious. Do, you could you could do put less um, mint, but I would not skimp. I mean, yeah, you could skimp on mint, but I would not leave it out because we have beautiful things that are going to happen with this. And I'm going to put this pan away, my new pan from the Netherlands. And I'm going to uh, place a little parsley on, but that's not it. Now we're moving on to the shallots, but we can um, perhaps uh, put some foil on here. It's very, quite hot already. And then we're gonna get out a little frying pan and we're going to get that going and i'll be right back with you because we want this oil to heat up okay folks so we have here a small frying pan and a little bit of uh, canola oil any kind of non-flavored vegetable oil would be fine we want to bring the heat up to 350 fahrenheit for uh which is the the best temperature for frying and we're just going to uh, make sure that you have your shallots all chopped up and they should chop be chopped into rings because we're making a garnish but this garnish is not just for visual effect it's uh, meant to be uh full of flavor It'll be an oniony, obviously, garlicky, obviously, and a little salty flavor to add to your um, multi uh, root vegetable mash. But we also want them to be crisp. And now you also want the, uh, since uh, the shallots are cylindrical with layers, you need to uh, separate the layers so that you get individual rings and now I got my paper out and my spider out for quick removal the paper towels is to dry off you know dry dry them out let the you know get the oil off them and there's a there's a period at which they will turn very brown very quickly so do not uh, take your eye off it. So these look really good. I like it. And, you know, just keep watching. It's time to take them. As soon as you s smell it, even a hint of gorgeousness, take them out. I'm using the spider here. Put them on the uh, paper towel bed I made. And then we're going to... Uh, quickly salt them and we're going to um put the there, there's the salt and then we're going to uh put another piece of paper towel folded on top to soak up uh excess oil and that's basically uh perfect and delicious and will be a big part of the garnish there's the bowl and now we're going to sprinkle our gorgeous fried shallots on. It's not just for garnish. It's for flavor. Salty, earthy, 
uh, garlicky shallots are from the garlic family. So there's a bit of onion and a bit of flavor and a bit of garlic flavor and a little extra salt. And we have a little bit more parsley to add because we're trying to make it beautiful. And here it is. It's really good.